I'm Carrie, and this is Sarah. Hi. Extreme close-up. <laughs> and this is the second time we tried to record because Laverne jumped upon the table in front of the camera again. So I've let her on our, I have a screen in back porch, so I'm hoping that will keep her occupied. It was an extreme close-up. <laughs> we may have to play a bloopers of that. I don't know. I don't Sorry. know. Okay. Any hey, any hey, anyhow. Anywho. Welcome back. This is floss tube number eight. Um, did I say we're three trail stitcher? Yeah, we three are. Stitcher. We're three trail stitchers. <laughs> um, thank you for subscribing if you've subscribed. Thank you for just stopping by if you're just stopping by. Um, we are trying to keep up with every week. So far, so good. Next week, my cousin Whitney will hopefully join us again. Um, we're gonna, I haven't asked her yet, but we're gonna see if she wants to have a movie night so then we can get together and share because she's been stitching quite a bit. Has she really? Because mm -hmm. she hasn't. Yeah, because I think she finished one thing, started something else, and then she started something else. I don't know. Anyway, so she hasn't shown any of it to me, Whitney Lynn. Yeah. So anyway, so it's been kind of a lost week. I mean, for everyone, let's face it. <laughs> but I was sick, not COVID. I was just sick um, and pretty miserable. I. Started getting sick probably Sunday, went to work on Monday, called my doctor, and um, anyway, I missed Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of work, got antibiotics. I'm feeling better, just kind of tired, but um, so it was kind of a lost week. I did not do much stitching. Whitney and I were texting, I think Wednesday night, I finally felt good enough to stitch a little bit, and I told her I hadn't stitched since Sunday, and she was like, oh, you are sick. So, um, but I did have a finish. But I mean, that's not because I only had to finish one part. So <laughs> uh, the last part of Positivity Rules came out at the end of last week. So there is my finished. That yeah, that's good. Uh, that is my finished unironed Positivity Rules. I finished it up in my new Morgan hoop, which I really did like. I enjoyed it. Um, so I'm excited to have this done. I want to find something to finish it on and then either hang it in my bedroom or my office. I just love the colors. I think it'd look really good in your bedroom. Those are very much your bedroom colors. Yeah. I mean, I live alone. So when I inherited my grandparents' house, I kind of made it what I wanted. So my office is pink. My kitchen is pink. <laughs> my bedroom is like sort of like a silver gray and, and teal. Aqua. Yeah, aqua. So anyway. So that will go in there. Here comes Laverne. Go back on the porch. Um, so anyway, I'm excited to have that finished. Um, I really enjoyed it. I really like the typography and what she does with her colors and her words. And I'm anxious to do another one. I didn't buy Oh Dear. I probably will at some point. It's super cute. I've seen people stitching it and the first part's really cute. So, but that was my only finish. Do you have a finish? I have, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to show my, <laughs> my fully finish. Yeah, and then I'll show okay. this. So last year, when I first got into cross-stitch, I think this was maybe the second or third thing I cross-stitched. It's a frosted pumpkin. It's called Ghouls Just Want to Have Fun. And it's been sitting in a box waiting for finishing and for the perfect way to finish it. So I was watching um, Java Girl Stitches, and she was talking about how she had shown stuff from Target and all these people commented like, you know, I paused my video and I ran to Target and I was like, well, I don't, I mean, I would go look for the stuff, but I don't know that I'd be that, you know, dramatic, but <laughs> then she was showing stuff she got at Walmart and she showed this ghost and I was like, I literally paused it and ran and got this ghost at Walmart and I don't, I'm not a big Walmart shopper. I'm a Target gal, but I couldn't help it. And it was like, 350? I don't know. He was really cheap. Get out. So my mom, of course, finished it on um, like foam board on top of a black fabric. She put this sort of like silk rickrack trim around the ends. She hung it with the same rickrack. Um, it's just, you know, glued. We would like, I would like to replace this bow with maybe like a bat bow tie or something. But Ooh, for now, I think cute. the bow works. It's just kind of flat, but... And this was stitched on fabric that I dyed myself um, with the called for colors. So there's like some, I think it used one or two, one fancy floss, two. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I love this one. I'm super proud of it. Like this is probably one of my, I think my stitches look the best on this of pretty much anything I've stitched. And I don't know if it's because I 
dyed this fabric, so it was sort of crunchy. Oh, yeah. And so it was really sturdy, but anyway. So I'm excited to have it, and so it's hanging right it's by really my cute. spider that we broke the leg on at one point, and Sarah glued for me, so. It's so cool. that's my fully finished object. I actually have two finished things, fully finished and hanging up for Halloween, thanks to my mom, because not me. Um, okay, so do you want to talk about whips? Oh, do you want me to do this at the end? Yeah, we'll okay. do that at the end. All right. <clears throat> yeah, we can talk about whips. You go ahead. Well, do you want because I've been talking and talking. No, I'm have you, go ahead. That's all right. Okay, I don't really have a in-progress whip because I finished Positivity Rules and was like, I'm kind of done. It finished it late last night. So, but my whip that will start as soon as we're done with Floss Tube is um, I will get back to my Halloween Ouija. Um, because the last part of it came out today, so Looks really or good. not today, um, on the first. So I need to do the three boxes down the side and some backstitch. So my goal is to finish that this weekend, which I think is completely doable because they're not huge parts in those boxes. Okay. Is that the only thing you've been working on this week? Yes. Oh yeah, because you didn't stitch much. Okay, I have been working on my Welcome Foolish Mortals. Um, I got the Welcome Foolish Mortals you put done. Behind it. Yeah, I'll put something behind it. I got the Welcome Foolish Mortals done, and I started the ghost, and I have redone that hat two times now because one tiny stitch was off, and it was driving me nuts. And Mom and Carrie both said, "We can't see it. You don't even notice it," but it was driving me nuts. So I took the hat out for a second time, and I'll be stitching it for a third time tonight. And if I'm still a stitch off, it's gonna be a stitch off because it's, it's gonna stay that I don't way know, it's gonna stay that way and then I pulled out since she's almost done with her Ouija board I decided well hey maybe I should actually start mine so I pulled mine back out and I really need to take the squares out because they're off somewhere I can't even tell honestly where they're off right now but um you might not have to pull them all out I can't believe they're all off I don't know it's weird this is the fabric I dyed for it and that's why I want to take them out and reuse this fabric. I don't want to lose the fabric. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll recount. I don't know. It's weird. Um, let's see. What else? I told you this might be a quick one. We're only like seven and a half minutes in. Because there haven't been any like burn close-ups again. So Yeah, no burn close-ups. Um, so haul. Oh, I don't have a ton of haul. I do. I went crazy. I did buy some... Didn't I buy a pattern? Oh, I bought the cutest pattern. Um, can I try to look it up? Sure. Why don't you talk about your haul and then I'll look this up. All right, so we went to CC and Company last weekend. Last weekend, yeah. last Saturday, I think, before Carrie got really sick. Um, and I bought a couple of patterns and then I came home and cleaned my little nest area where I stitch and found a couple of patterns that I completely forgot I had. So, um, at our local LNS last week, I bought the 2020 Wee Santa, who's completely adorable. That's when we saw Athena. That's when we saw Athena, yes. And then I bought Blackbird Designs, Casting a Spell. And I can't decide, I really love that box. I just don't know where to find one. But um, I may also just do them individually and put them in a little bowl or something. And then when I cleaned out my nest, I found my little turkey from Heart and Hand. Yes. And my warm winter woolens. I had seen someone, I have no idea, because I saw it 100 years ago, who took that little sheep and made, used fancy floss and made like six or eight of them, maybe six, and did all different sweaters using fancy floss, and I really want to do that. So then I went crazy on Etsy. And I bought a full coverage Maleficent based off one of the Haunted Mansion portraits. Can't wait to start. It's 21 pages. I've never done anything this big, so we'll see what happens. And these are not super great because my printer ran out of ink. But these are from Stitchy Princess Black. Stitchy Princess on Etsy, on Instagram, Stitchy Princess Black. Um, that one's called Adventure Awaits. Sorry, Adventure Awaits. This one is Relax. 
keeper of the books. They're really cute. Yeah. And da, 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 Rabbit's House. Cute. She has a really cute Baba Yaga house too that I want. Oh. And then I bought these printed horrible, so I'm only gonna show one of them, but I bought all five of the Frosted Pumpkins candy corn costume. Yeah, I love those. Um, They're really cute. And uh, I wanna do them individually and like stuff them like little candy corns and put them in a bowl or something when really I get cute. to it. On thousand. like a bigger count? Yeah, I think I wanna do them on 11. I need to get some 11. You wanna show your sewing? Oh, and then purchase. I bought two new um, Notion bag sewing for sewing notion bags this one is did you know okay from what sacy sacy makes sacy makes sacy yeah, makes um, it's a stitch and go case super cute sorry if it's blown sorry out we have a lot of light yeah. going because the house and is and then today. i bought the booklet pouch from anella howie howie sorry if i'm butchering your name so I want to try and get both of those made up, a sample of them, because I love my sew along bag. So that's, yeah, I went a little crazy this week. I don't know. Um, I only got, I think I bought another pattern, but I. Did you get something last week at CC? Well, yeah, but I showed those. Oh, you showed those tomorrow. already. That's right. Yeah. I wasn't here last week. Okay. I did buy this pattern online. She's awesome. Which is Frenchie from Greece. We're, like I said, we're huge Greece fans. This is from Space Cat Patterns, and I love it. It's amazing. So Frenchie is my favorite, of course. But um, so I'm excited to do that at some point down the road. Um, oh, and then I also got fabric from Be Stitch Me. So I did the Friday Fight Night last Friday, um, and it was my first time participating. I've bought fabric from her, but. Um, this is my first time participating in Friday Fight Night, and it's amazing. So this came, and then I also ordered, I haven't gotten them yet, but I ordered two pieces just from her regular stock because I started stitching Sleepy Hollow by Tiny Modernist last week, and there's a there's white in it, and it didn't show up on the fabric that I loved and chose, mm. and nothing showed up. I tried chalk. I tried... I mean, Ecru 38, doesn't work, 3865, Ecru. B5200. I mean, nothing was bright enough. So I had to scrap it and I was bummed because I was anxious to work on that. Anyway, so these are the ones I got from Friday Fight Night. This is an 18 count Ada. You know, that might be a good one. I don't think for the one I'm doing, for Sleepy Hollow, I don't think. Oh, I think it'd be really cool. Well, I mean, I think it would probably work. I'm just, that wasn't what I was thinking of. Oh, before. okay, all right, fine. Um, this is Vampire's Kiss. And it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what it looks like, right? Yep. It's amazing. So for this, I was honestly thinking of um, the Universal Monster House. Oh, that would be really good on that. Are you going to do the black and white or the color? I can't decide. Black and white would be really cool. I just, I'm not a huge, like, I love colors and my stitching. And so I love the look of the black and white one. I just don't know if I would enjoy stitching it. I still think I want to do the individual rooms black and white and hang yeah. them up around my yeah. colored one. And then the other one I bought is 16 count, which is what I went for. This is the one that I wanted the most. 16 count autumn. And it's amaze balls. I mean, that's incredible. That is incredible. I don't even know how. And like, I love the feel of her fabric. It's just, to me, it's reminiscent of the feel of like um, color and cotton. Yeah. Where it's like not too soft. Because sometimes, I love Picture This Plus, but sometimes it's almost too soft to the touch. Um, so it can be a little loosey-goosey. But anyway, so I have two more pieces coming of varying like sort of gray autumn-ish things to try to figure out what to do Sleepy Hollow on. I put that fabric flare in with um, the Praiseworthy Stitches Trick or Treat. Not sure it's gonna work because it has white in it too. Mm. But I feel like in that one I could maybe play with the white more than because Sleepy Hollow has skeletons and, and ghosts and yeah. things that so really need to be. So it's hard to like play with it. The white color. Um, as far as plans, you have any plans? Um, my plan is to get the hat on that ghost right if it kills me because um, it's driving me nuts, and then to rip out 
the boxes of that Ouija board and restart it. And I may actually restart with the stuff in the middle and save the boxes. for. I usually don't like to do that. I usually, like if there's a grid or a house or something, I like to have yeah. that all done and gridded out. But those boxes are just giving me fits. And I really want to do it because I love that fabric and I think it looked really good. Yeah. So I may just start with the house in the center. But um, one of my other plans is to get my little nest area reorganized and get some things out and in my baskets that I, I know I eventually want to work on and kit up that Maleficent. That Maleficent has 50 colors. It's full coverage and on a piece of 14, I need a piece of 15 by 36 fabric and I think I need to draw the grid on it. Well, yeah, so, I mean, it's your first time. So those are time. my, those are some plans for the next, I don't know, week or two. Um, I want to finish my Halloween Ouija style, of course. And once I'm done with that, I feel like um, I'm free to, um, to, to do whatever I want. Like I said last week, I just want to start stuff. Um, I haven't really been in the mood necessarily to um, stitch Christmas yet, but I drove by Hallmark last night on my way home. Just, I didn't go in. I was just there picking up dinner. And I drove by Hallmark Did on my you way see home. All the ornaments? Yeah. And I was like, it, I didn't see much Halloween at all. It's like full on Christmas, which kind of put me in the mood. Well, Christmas, Christmas. In, at Hallmark starts in July. You know that, right? Yeah. Because that's when they put their Christmas ornaments. everywhere starts in July. Well, I know, but that's always been the And thing. then I really want to <laughs> stitch. This has been on my mind a lot. I really want to stitch. I don't know when I'll start it, but I have the best of intentions. I bought this last year sometime, and it's Heartstring Samplery. So Beth Twist, um, Philip Foster House. And I really love it. I loved it as soon as I saw it. It's kind of really blowing it out, but it's got these beautiful blue, beautiful blue, beautiful purple flowers on that tree. I love it. This is a historical house. Um, I think 1847 is when it was built in Eagle Creek, Oregon. And um, I don't know, I'm drawn to stitching it. Our grandmother was born in Estacada, Oregon. And I'm pretty sure that's not too far from Eagle Creek. Um, and so I don't know. It just kind of makes me think of her and I love it. I love stitching houses yeah, too. Sweet. So houses are cool. I would like to start that, but then I also have praiseworthy stitches trick or treat that I want to start. And then that Glendon place monster March and the frosted pumpkin Christmas things for their, com you know, their sow. Yeah. So yep. there's a lot that I want to do. So I don't know. We'll see next week. I'll have started something completely different and you'll be like talk what in the world is she thinking um before we move on to uh media corner and let oh. people go that don't want to listen to our endless ramblings um do you want to show that and then i'll talk about the other thing oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so um the witchy stitcher uh there's a group that's called the stitcher's coven stitcher's coven stitchy coven stitcher's coven anyway they did, um, or we did, I guess, I was involved in it. We did a smalls exchange. Uh, you signed up back in April and then you had to send it out by uh, the 1st of October, which if my person's, well, they don't know if they have me or not, but I did send it. It's, I sent it on the 30th of you know, September, nothing like the last minute. But my person, whose name is Lori S, sent me this very adorable, I mean, this is on a tiny, tiny Yeah, count. and those stitches are uh, These stitches perfect. are impeccable. And it's just a little happy Halloween pillow. Yeah, those but stitches are perfect. It's perfect, and I will be keeping this out all year long. I have a little bowl where I have a couple other Halloween pillows. One of my favorite thing about like Halloween patterns are when the window, and this is um, Jeeves Kirby, the windows look like a warm glow. Yeah. And that's what that is. I yeah. love that. It's adorable. It is just so, so cute. cute. So, I should have done that. Whitney and I should have done that. We you really should have. So I will definitely be signing up for this exchange again next year. Um, my only problem is you had to, the stitch surface had to be, it couldn't be bigger than five inches square. The finish could be bigger. But since I stitched pretty much exclusively on 14, it was really hard for me to find something. Yeah, and people but, on there have been sharing the stuff they got. And I mean, yeah, it's so much fun. But I did a Even Stacey Nash. And not Nash, being a part of it, it's Stacey fun. Nash pattern. Um, my person should get it this week, so I'll find my picture that I took, and I can show that next time. Um, and then last week we talked about, oh, I taught, that was me. We, the royal we. 
<laughs> she she is a royal we. There's a lot I of forget, voices like, in when her I'm head. alone. It's like we've been following this pattern where it's like me alone, me with Sarah, the three of us. Me alone, me with Sarah, the three of us. It's like been a pattern like that in our whole eight episodes. Anyway, um, we talked about it giveaway if we reach 100 subscribers and I did not expect it to happen quickly but it happened like by the end of that day pretty much yeah, <laughs> so um Brenda and the cereal Laura from Brenda and the cereal starter mentioned us on floss tube and my mom I watch them every once in a while I because I watch so many floss tubes that it's hard to fit them all in but my mom called me like later that afternoon and she's like you're famous <laughs> <laughs> Brenda, the cereal starter mentioned you. And I was like, okay. So, um, I do love them. They're hilarious and their stitching is unbelievable. And every time I watch them, I'm like, maybe I will stitch a sampler. You know, why well, not? There's, there's some cute, like, Halloween samplers that would yeah. be really fun to stitch. So, anyway, so thank you so much to them for shouting us out. Um, we are now closer to 200 than we were to 100. So we are going to work, we being me, work on making a um, project bag this week to give away. So our giveaway will be next week. Okay. Um, and then um, we will probably do another one when we reach 200. Sarah's thinking about making one of her one of sew my little bags. sew away bags or one of the other Notion bags that I showed today. So disclaimer. We're beginning sewers. Oh, sewers. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not a professional. So, but like, here, this folks. is one of the bags I made. It's this cowboy bag with the vintage print. So, I'll try to find something really cute, uh, get it cut out, and get it made so I can show it next week. That's my challenge for myself this okay. week. So, we might have to get together for dinner one evening and, <laughs> and pick out some fabric. Yeah. And, and maybe then, I can pick some stuff out too and just go ahead and get the bag sewn up so that yeah. when we, I can show it so that maybe it'll encourage. And if we're able to get together with Whitney next week, um, We'll dye some fabric and uh, we'll include a piece of fabric as well because I do have some extra fabric laying around. So cool. Um, so thank you so much if you have subscribed thus far. So come back next week for our giveaway. So here is where I'm going to say if you don't want to hear us ramble about stuff that's not cross stitch, you can just click, get on out of here. But if you do, we won't keep you too long, but we're going to tell you about um, what we've been watching, reading, listening to, or buying book wise so oh. so sarah do you want to start my goodness no i went a little crazy at the bookstore this week i, I don't know i don't know what i just had to buy some stuff so i bought um i bought and read the third book in the gulia series it's a beginning chapter book series for kids they're cute they are cute and the illustrations are amazing yeah, they are like so tim, much fun tim burton-esque yes very tim burton-esque so i bought and read that um I was going to show da, 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 da. those are not the ones I bought. There are some others. I bought Seance Tea Party, which is a graphic novel. It's probably going to be next on my list. No Place for Monsters, which has gotten amazing reviews from other children's book authors. Skunk and Badger, which one reviewer called it The Odd Couple Meets Winnie the Pooh. And I absolutely love books where animals are personified. So You're a big that, poo fan. I'm a big poo fan. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds weird. And then I bought also, <laughs> I bought Doodleville, which is another um, new graphic novel. And I'm, I read half of it in one night. Yeah, uh, he has his first book. Well, I'm sure he wrote other things. But his first uh, kids graphic novel was The Cardboard Kingdom, which I read last year. And it's great. It's very inclusive. You yeah, know, this just, is too. It's just nice. I think that you more and more in children's literature, you're seeing more inclusivity because representation completely and utterly yeah. matters. So, and that's like a um, big thing right now we're doing in our district is we're doing a diversity audit to kind of see what we need to start including. And so I'm a big person that whenever I buy a children's book, it used to go in my classroom when I taught, but now that I'm the library, I just donate it to my library. Yeah. So I have not read The Cardboard Kingdom, so I will put that on my list yeah, to really read. Good. But this has it's just fun. been so amazing. I mean, like I said, I read half of it in one night, and I will definitely probably finish it before Sunday. To me, The Cardboard Kingdom was sort of, and I'm going to say this because I haven't, I mean, I'm not a person that, I read a lot, so I don't necessarily remember what I read, but when I think of it, I think of... um the Egypt game 
where those kids kind of, I don't know if you ever read the Egypt game. No, it sticks in my head, the title, but I don't But uh, when the kids kind of come together in this area to like tell their own stories. And oh, okay, yeah. Same. That's what And that's what this is. It's uh, kids that are artists and their doodles take on a life of their own, but it also mirrors their personalities and their, their beliefs and things like that. So it's been really good. And I purchased um, these books. I'm still reading Death on the Nile because I haven't been reading much. I don't know what my deal is. I, I think I just go through stages where I just don't read as much. I've been I, reading a little bit each night, and I am really enjoying it. I but, do that. Um, and then, like, especially during the school year, I find myself yeah. reading more kids' books. And sometimes I'll go through them really quick. And other times, you know, the book might – I have a thing outside my – my door of my library that says Miss McDonald's reading, Miss McDonald's listening to. And sometimes the same book will be up there for over a month and the kids are like, aren't you done with it yet? <laughs> like they're shaming like, us. Like, oh, sometimes Miss McDonald's just doesn't feel like reading. <laughs> I think too, when you, when I stitch more, I read less because I'll stitch yeah. up until I go to bed, which usually I read before I go to sleep to calm my mind. But if I've been stitching, you know, that's kind of does that for me as well. Yeah. So mm. anyway, I bought two books. Um, this one, Path to the Stars, which is by Sylvia, um, I'm going to say Acevedo. My Journey from Girl Scout to Rocket Scientist, so it's an autobiography, which looks amazing looks for really, younger readers. Really good. Um, might be too much for an elementary, but... Um, middle school? Yeah, if I read this and I enjoy it, I might donate it to our middle school. And then I also bought... <laughs> <laughs> Last year, I listened to the audiobook of... The Radium Girls by uh, Kate Moore, and it's amazing. It's the best nonfiction book I think I've ever read. I'm gonna say read because I consider audio. If you listen to audiobooks, I consider that reading. I always tell my kids that. Yeah, so, count. um, and I just really enjoyed it. I mean, enjoyed it in the sense that it was really well written because it's a very sad story. It's very um, it's a horrifying story. Yeah, it's pretty. I awful. mean, it's. Mm -mm. But these women were incredible. So um, I saw this, which is the Radium Girls. It's an, a young reader edition. Definitely not going to be elementary, but middle or high school. Um, and it's the book, but just changed and adapted for younger readers. So I'm super excited to read this at some point. I downloaded the audiobook again because I want to listen to it again. It's just really well told. And um, just if you're looking for a story about incredible women fighting for their themselves and for others it's literally for book. their lives yeah um does she read the audiobook or is it someone else no it's someone okay. else so it says the radium girls the scary but true story of the poison that made people glow in the dark so highly recommend the original radium girl books a book i will let you know if this is as good so i was excited for that and then um what i've been listening to uh, someone had suggested, uh, I haven't been listening to much because I wasn't driving back and forth to work this week. Um, someone suggested the podcast Gastropod, which is sort of the um, history of food, different foods. And I listened to one yesterday on my way to work that was um, fascinating. It's about, it's, it was, I think it was titled like the Kiwi Queen. And it was about this <clears throat> woman that brought all of these vegetables and fruits to the United States oh, and okay. like she owns a produce company in I think LA it was really fascinating so thank you for recommending that I will keep listening to it and then today <clears throat> I listened for a little bit to um oh what's the name of it and nothing less which um, is a podcast about the 19th amendment and the, the suffrage movement and it is hosted by Retta from Parks and Rec and Good Girls, Bad Girls. What's the name of that show? Bad Girls? I, Carrie, you're asking the... I don't... Okay, I don't know. And um, Rosario Dawson, who is Rosario Dawson. She's been in a ton of stuff. So it's put on by the National Park Service. It's fascinating. And they... Um, what I love about listening to podcasts is... Sometimes, I mean, the commercials do get annoying, but sometimes there's like commercials for other podcasts. Yeah. And so they recommended um, another one about the 19th Amendment called Amended. And so I'm going to try listening to that. There's one. I need to go back and listen to it. When I was listening to um, the DC Sniper podcast, oh, that, yeah. the person who also did the Zodiac, which you would know yeah, because Monster. you recommended it. Monster. Yeah. Um, there was one that almost sounds 
Paranormally, and I need to go back and figure out what it is because I think I want to listen to it. I have been listening to the fifth Harry Potter book. Um, last year, I started a challenge at my school that I would reread re all seven Harry Potters. And originally, I was supposed to finish it before school was out, but then, you know, school was out at spring break and we never went back. Um, so I'm picking up where I left off. I finished book four and now I'm uh, listening to book five. And then I've talked to my kids the uh, same thing that I think listening to an audiobook counts as reading it. So I told them I'm listening to them so that I can also be reading other things at the same time to recommend to them. And I've had a lot of kids come up and tell me, oh, well, I'm on this, or I'm on, I'm on six, I'm on seven. I just started, and I've had a lot of kids pop up and want to start the series. So we've yeah. had to be borrowing books from other schools to really um, get that going. So that's what I've been listening to. And I will probably finish the Harry Potter series, honestly, before I get back to any podcast. Yeah, like I said, I mean, you all probably know this, but the Harry Potter audiobooks are probably the best audiobooks ever. Yeah. Because it's Jim Dale. I, I think the... In, the uh, British you can ones also are Stephen, Stephen Fry, Fry, which I'm sure is also and amazing. And I would love, maybe I'll I think you start get them asking on, for those. <laughs> yeah, I think you can get them on Audible, um, his version. But Jim Dale, I would like, love to I, listen to the Stephen Fry ones too. I'm a huge um, Pete's Dragon fan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Jim Dale was in Pete's Dragon. And just, I don't know, he's incredible. So, uh, last thing, what have you been watching? I finished. Uh, the Umbrella, second season of The Umbrella Academy, absolutely amazing. Cannot wait for season three. And I started watching, it's a limited series on Netflix called The Reckoning. And it's about a cop who's hunting a serial killer. Um, and I'm only two episodes from the fin end and it's, it's really good. And so I'll probably finish it up tonight. And then honestly, I've been watching a lot of Bob's Burgers. <laughs> yeah. Because it's something... Excuse me. Um, I'm just, this year it has just been exhausting for every single person on the planet, I think. Yeah. And I think for school teachers, uh, for parents that are having to school their kids at home and school teachers that are having to figure out how everything works when you have everyone back at school, it's just exhausting. I love seeing the kids. It's the absolute best part of my day. But then I come home and I think that's one of the reasons I just haven't been stitching up as much or I mess up a ghost hat three times in a row. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of nice to turn something on that I already love and I don't really have to watch. I can just listen to it and it makes me laugh. I, I don't know that there's a lot of Bob's Burgers fans out there, but it makes me laugh. And I'm pretty sure in a previous life I was Louise Belcher. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> Carrie doesn't know what I'm talking about because she won't watch it because she's, you know, a big jerk. Anyway, um, that's really what I've been watching. I'm a little disappointed that... Uh, the Chiefs game has been postponed tomorrow because I was yeah. really looking forward to it. But apparently the Patriots quarterback has COVID and we do not want to expose Patrick Mahomes, who is no. the savior of Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> He's bringing us a Whataburger. He's bringing us a Whataburger. <laughs> he brought us a Super Bowl victory after 50 years. Uh, and that's the truth. We are, and he's just, I don't I, know. I probably, I don't know if you even care, but he just seems like one of the most genuinely... Yeah. Nice kind people. people yeah um and so when i heard it had been postponed i was like what and then i saw that their the other quarterback had covid and i was like yep nope we can wait yeah like i could care less about football i mean it was exciting i would was i was probably more exciting when the royals won the world series just because i remember that well happening you remember when I was that little. happening in 85 but um you know, I was very excited for, especially for like our kids to see the Chiefs yes, win the absolutely, um, and to have Super Bowl. such a positive role model. And but then... Sarah and Mom will watch uh, the Chiefs games, and they'll like text back and forth for those oh, touchdowns. Yeah. But when I heard that we were getting a Whataburger, like Whitney and I were like, okay, yeah, he's a saint. <laughs> because so we Saint love Patrick will be safe for another week. Yeah. So, hopefully, 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 COVID won't also ruin our Whataburger chances. Yeah, no. It, if COVID ruins the Whataburger, Carrie and Whitney are. Gonna, I mean, it's going to get 2020. Ugly. Come on, 2020. Okay. <sighs> um, what am I watching? I'm watching Floss Tube. I'm watching lots of Medium. I randomly <laughs> in a weak moment. Last week, <laughs> that I was going to start re-watching the Twilight movies, which I probably have not seen since I saw them in the theater. Like, I remember reading the books. There, I went, It was when I was working at Barnes & Noble. We went to the midnight shows. So I had to live through those in person, especially the later ones. And <laughs> it's rough. It's, it's kind of scarring. But okay. I decided I wanted to watch them again because they're all on Hulu. 
And so I watched like Twilight and New Moon one night. Last night I watched Eclipse, and now I have to face you Breaking gotta watch, Dawn. You've got to watch Breaking Dawn. Which was my least favorite book, and my least favorite of the movies because it's it, just so like what. So she got me Twilight one year for Christmas because she knew the 13 year old girl in me would squeal and scream, and I did. I've read I've read all four books multiple times. Yeah. I have. Midnight Sun on hold to read on my Kindle from the library. I went to every midnight show. Yeah. Breaking Dawn, I went to the midnight shows the first night and then took the day off the next day to go see yeah. it again. Um, You're a twi -hard. I'm a twi -hard, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, the 13-year-old girl inside of me just squeals every time. But then when I came over, because I since she was sick, I brought her dinner one night, and it's Twilight is paused there on the screen and I just had to laugh because... Yeah, like, I don't shame anyone for no, she, watching it. She I mean, I read the book. She'll I shame the me, movies. but oh, she won't sure. shame other people. <laughs> I'll make fun of Sarah and no, Whitney, no, no. but not But yeah, else. no, no, no. She, no. So I'm re-watching those, although, I don't know. I'm in the mood to watch, like, Aaron Brockovich or something, so I might watch Look, that. You gotta finish. You gotta You gotta. Oh, I'll see finish them, for sure. Painfully. Breaking Dawn was probably my favorite book. Yeah. Because I got oh, no. got what I wanted. I know. Yeah, I, it's just no. I loved Eclipse, but I loved Breaking Dawn. But then, I don't know. Yeah. I like those movies. It's yeah. They're kind of a weak moment thing for me, too. It's like, um, hmm, there's really nothing to do today. Maybe I'll do that. But And then lastly, my number one comfort viewing. I have two comfort viewing shows, like when I'm having a really bad day. One is Queer Eye. On Netflix and the other one is the Great British Bake Off and um, the Great British Bake Off started again they're doing like that one episode a week thing which is annoying but it's probably better for me and I was gonna wait to watch it but then I didn't feel good and I was like forget this I'm watching it and it was everything I needed is, like is soon as... Hollywood still on it yeah yeah yeah. Okay. yeah I told my mom I called her like later that night and I was like when that music started playing, I lit, which I was sick, granted, I literally almost started crying because it's just like the most like, oh, maybe everything will be okay. And that's how Bob's Burgers is for me. going to be my, okay, folks. Like comfort viewing. So anyway, so we just rambled about Twilight for... For seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't So seven, we'll let you go four. because um, if you hang, hung in for that, then you're a trooper. Then so, you are. You deserve to um, get to Let something. us know in the comments below if you want what you are listening to. I appreciate the podcast recommendations. If you've read a great book that you think that we should read or seen a good movie or there's a TV show you think is worth watching, chances are we're going to watch it or listen yeah. to it or read it because... We're not doing anything else. We are pretty serious. Like we might go to Target occasionally or the store, but yeah, no, that's we're what, not doing restaurants. Yeah. We're not doing movies. You know, so. And if your kiddos are reading some great series, let us know because yeah. we'll pick them up and throw them in our library for our kiddos to read. And I'll usually read anything. Like if I buy it, I read it first before I throw it in there for them. So, yeah. but we're always we're up for anything. So thank you again for stopping by. Um, take care of yourself. Stay healthy. Go vote. And, um, yeah. So I was thinking today that when I was talking about voting, mm -hmm. that, like, we come from some Missouri Democrats, like, a long line. And that our motto as kids was or that we always heard was, if you don't vote, you can't complain. And we love to complain. We so. do. We love to complain. <laughs> so we get out and vote so that we can complain when we don't yeah, get our way. That was my grandma's. <laughs> my grandma would always say that. If you, can't, if you don't vote, you can't you complain. You can't complain. Like, well, God we're love gonna, her. We're going to vote, Mimi. Um, so, anyway, so take care of yourself. The world's crazy cake. So, watch some great British break off. Stitch. Thank you again to Brendan, the serial starter. If you know of anyone else who shouts us out or mentions us, let us know below. Because Absolutely. I always want to say thank you and I want to check out uh, new floss tubers. So, there are a lot of new floss tubers out there. It's just kind of nice. Um, so, anyway, I hope you have a great afternoon. Get have some a stitching great in. Great week. Yep, a great week. Eat some Halloween chocolate. We're just going to keep saying random. We are. It's, this is the, called the Midwest Goodbye. Here's the thing. <laughs> it's also because it's too far away for us to push the button. So <laughs> one of us has to get up, up and go stand up and push it. I'll do it. She's going to do so it. So our Midwest Goodbye is going to end. So bye-bye, um, y'all. See you real soon. <laughs> and have a great week.